Have you ever noticed how gorgeous, glowing, and radiant your favorite celebrity looks, especially when they're on their way to a special event or the red carpet? It's not simply because they're wealthy and have access to professional artists and professional products. There's also some celebrity skin secret. Unfortunately for you, you actually have your very own beauty pro, and I'm going to show you how to achieve this. You look. Oh girl, you blow my mind. I know. Hi, pretty people. It's Crystal, your very own personal beauty pro. And I actually am a beauty pro. Primary work is in what's called advertising or commercial work. I also do editorial work, which is the kind of work you would occasionally see in a magazine. I've done many a New York Fashion Week. I absolutely love sharing inspiration, encouragement, and entertainment through beauty. I call it edutainment. I don't mention this often, but yes, I have done celebrities and I have met more than I can count at this point. I don't draw attention to it often because that's not what this channel is about. But what it is about is giving everyday people access to pro level tips, tricks, and encouragement and quality information that I know firsthand works. So today we're going to talk about a celebrity skin what I call that high-end skin that makes you look pretty and polished, but still natural, healthy, and glowing. This video has some tips and tricks that I don't hear people share often. Be sure to subscribe and take notes because you're going to want to remember this one. So to look expensive, you wanna treat your skin like it is priceless because it is. Instead of prepping the skin with something labeled primer, I'm going to actually prime the skin. What you're doing when you prime or prep the skin is that you're preparing it to be the best foundation beneath your foundation. And while I may or may not use something labeled a primer, depending on what I'm doing on set or on myself, I will always prep or prime the skin. Today I'm doing that with a double layer of some moisture and hydration. I am going to use the Tatcha Dewy Serum. So it's designed to plump and smooth. And you really just need a pea size amount. And the thing about your skincare, especially when you're preparing for makeup. Press it in and you wanna massage it in, upward motion. And you'll hear a lot of people say, okay, now I'm gonna let that soak in or sink in. But in reality, products don't quite work like that. A lot of times what you're doing is you're just allowing them to lay on top of the skin, which means it's not fully absorbed. So you're not fully getting the benefits like you could. And also when you leave it laying on top of the skin, you leave more product on top of the skin to mix with your makeup. And especially if you're oily, you might find your makeup breaking down or getting a little grainy or getting that little textured appearance faster throughout the day. It's really good to massage and merge, fully absorb your skin prep into the skin. And then we're also gonna layer in a bit of the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. When you get your skin really nice and drenched, with moisture and because your skin has gotten the hydration and the moisture that it needs it's less likely to drink up the makeup a good guideline to know when you're ready is to massage it in until you don't feel that slip when people think about celebrity skin or expensive skin they think about a flawless complexion. And sometimes people just go straight for the foundation. They slather that on and that could work, but there are some other approaches that can be even more beautiful. It's really important to put the dimension into your skin. It looks really beautiful on a photograph and film and it's beautiful in person too when it is done properly and naturally. Today we're going to do some of the shaping and sculpting first before foundation. I'm going to use the Tom Ford shade and illuminate. I'm going to use this deeper shade to contour the face a bit and I'm going to start by applying a little bit where I want it. And I'm going to apply less than I think I need. The benefit in doing this is that you have more blending room and you're less likely to overdo. Deep and chocolatey as that looks in the pan, it lays on the skin like a beautiful shadow. Starting back here high and really far back 
on the cheekbone because that's where I want to hollow out the face just a bit and carve it out just a bit and push the cheek up. I'm using a general guideline of not coming much lower than the nose and that's because I'm taking my face shape into account and about that height is a great place for my contour to hit without dragging the face down. I am going to add a shadow below the chin and I am going to shape the sides of the nose. Now I'm not doing train tracks but what I am doing is creating a shadow so that my features are three-dimensional. Then I'm going to take a dry beauty blend to gently kind of dance that over where I place the product to make sure it's nice and softened. Next up is actually foundation. I'm going to use a celebrity favorite and a makeup artist favorite that is Armani's Luminous Silk. Because I've gotten some sun recently, I am going to use a bit of a blend of 8 and 8.5. I enjoy applying these with a brush because I've laid down my contour and shaping first this time around. I'm going to use a sponge so again I don't move that contour. I'm going to start right here in the center of the face and gently work my way out over the entire face. And obviously I'll use a lighter touch around the contour areas, but I will go over those and that contour will peak through. This high end skin is about thin, natural layers. We see that complexion is looking yummier already. And another benefit that you see is that when you perfect the skin, the eye makeup, it stands out more. It looks more polished, pretty, and put together. This particular eye look, I selected because it is literally beautiful on every skin tone. Everyone can pull off a beautiful nude eye. And for the eyes, I use the Makeup by Mario palette. This is the Master Mattes, and I just use this one palette. Um, let's see. For concealer, we'll use the Armani Power Fabric. And I'm going to use this concealer more so for highlighting, lifting, and accentuating than I am for concealing. The foundation is a beautiful medium coverage, and it has pretty much evened out anything that I would have liked to even out. If you have more that you would like to cover, then you would go in with a corrector or a concealer. The areas I want to highlight are under the eye. I'm going to do a couple of dots. I really want that light to be more toward the inner corner of the eye. I will lift the under eye a little bit, but I am going to put a little bit of light, a little bit of extra light right here in the center of the forehead. Now I have the bang, so obviously I won't build as high. And I will add a little sharpness to the bridge of the nose. We shadowed the side, but I do want to add, see what that, uh, just that little dot, that bit of light does to lift the nose off of the face and give you a nice pretty dimensional look. So I'm going to do a bit of that and I'm going to give you some good tips about that too. To blend this area out, I am going to use a very small brush. This is also the reason I am building this on top because you could do your concealer beneath foundation also. But because I'm using it more so for highlighting and being more strategic, I placed it on top. Because if I had it underneath, when I blended out the nose, a lot of this would get blended and smoothed out and moved off center where I want to actually keep the effect. So I'm using this really small brush and I'm tapping. You will notice tons of videos at this point where people, you know, slap on the concealer and press it out. They're really pressing it into oblivion <laughs> and you're losing the effect that you could have when you do that. Now, if that's just what you want to do, if that's the look you just want, then there's nothing wrong with that. If you're trying to be strategic and use it to its best advantage to capture the light, then you want to keep it where you pretty much place it. Then another tip along those same lines is when people are highlighting under the nose. If you even look at artwork, if you look at the sketch of uh, someone's face, you will see there's light and shadow. A lot of people are just smearing it on like a concealer mustache. And once again, by all means, you can do that if that works for you. However, if you want 
to be more strategic and really create a beautiful enhancement around the cupid's bow, then you want to highlight the natural cupid's bow. You see that almost horseshoe shape where mine naturally is. Now careful not to go up too high. You don't want to give a runny nose effect. You might want to keep it a little lower, but of course it depends on the shape too. When I do that, and then sometimes you can also add a bit of contour in the hollow. When I blend it, I'm going to tap it until it kind of melts into the surrounding area. And that more deliberate concealer technique will also keep you from looking like you have like a big concealer muzzle. Unless of course you want to look like a panther that day. We're still working it now creams and that's one of the things that makes this so beautiful and skin like. Shiseido's cream blushes, beautiful berry is IO. If you're hesitant about cream blush, I would say one of the safest applications is tapping a bit on with the finger Soft sponge will also apply it well for you. I'm going to use this small angled brush. This has a really pretty mousse-like texture. So I'm going to build it high and pretty on the cheek today to keep this soft and beautiful high-end and celebrity level. I'm going to have to powder strategically. We don't want to mattify it to death so that the skin loses its healthy luminosity, but at the same time, you do need to mattify strategically so that it wears well throughout the day and it looks beautiful and glowy in photographs versus greasy or like there are hot spots. Then we're gonna try the Laura Mercier Blur Powder in the shade Honey. And a lot of people have the tendency to load up the puff and then go straight into the face. I'm gonna give you a tip that may work better to make your look more refined. Tap it lightly on the back of your hand or on a paper towel so that it looks more like this. See that soft whisper of an application on the puff? This is less likely to leave too much excess product on the skin, especially under the eye, and it's less likely to cause texture. And if you find that you still have a bit more sheen than you want, then you can go in with a second light layer. Piling it on and not doing this can lead to it grabbing. So I'm tiptoeing under the eye. I have this really great triangle so I can really control my application. I don't want to come up on the nose because I don't want to lighten in the wrong places. I am liking this soft golden color and I'm liking the smoothness. Generally speaking, it's more flattering for the under eye to be smoother and a bit more matte, but not dry. However, I wanna leave some of the glow in the rest of the complexion. So for that, we're going to use this really sheer lightweight setting powder. This is Armani's Luminous Silk Setting Powder. I'm going to use one of my Coyuto brushes. If you're oily, I would say go ahead and use a puff and lightly press and roll it into the skin to get a bit more of a set. It does add a nice soft focus finish. I'm going to finish it off with a fabulous Armani Liquid Lip. If you're feeling like something really rich, this 601 is beautiful. This is a beautiful blackberry. I am feeling like a classic red, so that's what we're going to do today. I'll give you some red lip tips. Make sure you blot any of your lip conditioner or anything that's on the lips off. It's really nice to take your sponge that has a bit of foundation on it and go over the edges of the lip. I'm loving that I'm seeing more people wear red lipstick because there's a red for everyone and it's so beautiful. I love it when people wear true reds versus that wine color that's not quite red. It can be so unflattering. I don't wanna catch any of my girls in old bitty burgundy. And then once you've done that with that touch of uh, foundation, you can tap lightly with the puff that had just a wee bit of powder. This will help with longevity and also with the appearance of the lip. And I noticed a lot of people freestyle the red lip. If you do that, take a close look in the mirror, take a quick selfie with your phone, and it will immediately reveal if you have any uneven edges. To take Beat Lip Liner First by MAC, this is an absolutely beautiful color that no one has quite duplicated. It's a deep red, but it's truly like a beat. It has that sort of glowing violet underneath the red. So I'll look straight into my mirror. The first thing I'll do is perfect the cupid bow and make sure it's centered. I'm going to semi-fill it in with 
cherry, which is a more true red. And once you get that outline, you have a nice base for a red lip that will last. Armani is known for its reds and this one is absolutely beautiful. There you have it, pretty people. Easy, effective secrets to celebrity skin. What I call high-end skin. Be sure to try some of these tips and tricks and tell me how you enjoy them and let me know which products you're going to use. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and seeing you in the very next video. But until next time, keep it pretty. Keep on talking to me, but I just want to see you.